Okay, I should have another video up uh, explaining why I chose metal roofing as the ceiling to my shop. Go watch that one if you want to know the reasons I went this route. But I do a lot of this stuff by myself. I don't really have any help. And hanging this stuff by yourself is its not that easy. Uh, this room I'm standing in here has a 10 foot ceiling. The rest of my shop has 12 foot ceilings. There's various ways you can hang this stuff. The way I did this room is I stick a ladder up against this wall, prop the metal up and use a two by four dead man to uh, hold it. I mean, it was, I dropped one sheet. It was a real pain. Now your options out there, if you're trying to do this by yourself, you know, like Harbor Freight sells one of these things, drywall lift, uh, $219. It only goes 11 and a half feet high though. I got 12 foot ceilings. So it's still going to leave you six inches short. But then I looked on uh, Home Depot's website. They've got one too. It's only $199, which I'm sure it's an import too. This one actually goes like 15 feet tall. So this will work if you want to spend $200. But I came up with a solution that may actually be easier than this and it's free. First, let me show you how to make it. I'm finishing my shops. So I got a lot of two by four scraps around. This one, uh, four feet long. Go back uh, 36 inches and make a mark. Then I came in an inch and a half. Let's connect those. You know, this portion is going to be cut away, but I kind of like a rounded transition there between the saw cuts. Got my fence at uh, one and a half inches. Any piece of uh, scrap metal. This is uh, this pretty pretty stiff uh, sheet metal. Came off of an old Bryant air conditioner, like the, the access panel. Need a strip about two and a half inches wide. And the length, I'm going to say 13 or 14. You can trim it later, but. Yeah, there's all kinds of ways to cut a piece of metal like this, but you know what I've discovered I've been using, I really like. These go in your skill saw, your circular saw. Pick these up at a farm supply store, price tag still in there, $1.94 each. They work pretty dang good. I've been, uh, I've been cutting on the one that's in here for a while, and then, you know, it's starting to get a little smaller, but it works pretty good. You know, they sell a Saw blade with carbide teeth down there at the hardware store for $60. It's made for metal. Or you can spend $1.94. Either way, you need some hearing protection, though, for sure. Here we're going to bend a lip on there, a little hook on that. And ultimately what, we're, what I want is I want that to hook over the truss. And no, this is not a permanent anvil stand. This is my grandpa's anvil. It's wore out. It's not really useful for too much. 
but it was just sitting here, it was handy. Like that. Hey, Upper. My uh, truss is uh, 12 feet from the floor. I got 12 feet ceilings. Uh, so let me kind of, I'll try to show you kind of what I'm thinking here. To mark uh, where we're going to mount this bracket, just hang your uh, strap up there first. I want the front edge of this strap to be where we started our cut. And I want the board, this part back here, to overhang this truss a quarter of an inch or so, just to keep it from doing this number. I want it to be kind of keyed onto there. When everything's uh, about level and lined up, make you a mark on your bracket. Right there's where we're going to fold it over. Now I come over to a bench files for uh, shaping this. I just got a little scrap of a two by four. Actually, it's not a bad thing for this to wrap around and I'll put screws on both sides and it'll make this 2 by 4 a little less prone to split, but we don't need that much metal, so. So we need to drill some holes in there so we can put some screws in it, but let's not mess up our real piece. Let's go back to that scrap we're using for shaping. And I'm just going to attach it with some drywall screws. And one last thing, we got to drill one hole. Uh, come in about an inch or so, and you only have to go about a half an inch down. Of course, I'm right on a knot. <laughs> so. And to finish off this tool, the last thing you need is a quarter inch bolt or screw. This one's about four inches long. I'll show you what that's for when we get back up on the ceiling. Okay, so now you get this kind of funny looking homemade tool. What do you do with it? That hanger? Hanging on the bottom of your truss. When we rotate it up, push that bolt through. That bolt locks it in. You kind of have to have that pivot on there or you couldn't hang it over the truss. Now you've got this nice little shelf to set your metal on. So I've got one of these uh, roll around scaffolds and uh, I've got it to where I'm about I don't know, seven feet or so under the ceiling so I reach over things is fine. Take our tools, hang them on the truss, push your pin out, screw the back some so you got a little bit of room. Grab a sheet of metal. Of course, that may not look extremely graceful, but that's the idea. Pick it up, slide it under. Now it's up there free. You can move it around and you know, position it exactly before you start mounting it.
Now, I don't know if there's anything like this tool commercially available out on the market. I looked, I didn't, I couldn't find anything. Uh, the only thing I could find was those drywall lifts, and um, I really didn't want to spend two hundred dollars for a tool that I would use one time, probably never use it again. And uh, you know, if this was eight foot ceilings, I probably wouldn't need to bother. I'd have probably just went the dead man route, like you know, I've hung drywall myself lots of times. But the twelve foot was kind of kicking me. I hope you got something useful out of this, and. Uh, Hopefully nobody uh, takes my idea and runs with it and makes money off of it. I guess if they try, this is proof that I came up with it first. Good luck. See ya.